One morning, the global tech world wakes up to an uncomfortable realization. The rules it trusted for decades no longer apply. The semiconductor hierarchy, once thought to be immovable, has begun to crack. For years, dominance in advanced chip making was believed to belong exclusively to those with access to Western and Japanese technology. Without American process tools, Dutch lithography systems, or Japanese materials, leadership was considered impossible. China, many assumed, would always remain several steps behind. The choke points were clear, the control absolute. Cut off the tools, and innovation would stall. That certainty brought comfort. It also created complacency. But beneath the surface, something else was taking shape. Faint signals started to appear, overlooked data points, quiet insider chatter, developments that didn't quite fit the accepted narrative. SMIC, China's flagship foundry, seemed to be advancing at a pace that didn't align with its supposed limitations. Analysts largely ignored it, assuming the progress was cosmetic. A yield improvement here, a minor optimization there, nothing disruptive. Then the claims emerged that changed everything. Reports suggested SMIC had reached an advanced nanometer class process without relying on any American or European fabrication equipment. No EUV systems. No familiar Western tools. According to industry doctrine, this simply could not happen. Yet evidence began to pile up that it had. Restricted facilities in Shanghai underwent dramatic transformations. Entire fabrication floors were torn apart and rebuilt. New machines appeared. Devices that didn't match known Western designs and couldn't be traced back to established suppliers. These weren't replicas. They were unfamiliar by design. Slowly, a realization set in. SMIC wasn't trying to follow the path laid out by global leaders. It had abandoned it entirely. Instead of pursuing EUV lithography, the company pushed extreme multi-patterning far beyond what experts believed practical, pairing it with powerful AI-driven computation. Machine learning systems stepped in where physics imposed limits. Software corrected, predicted, and optimized at scales once thought unreachable. Code was doing the work hardware could not. This wasn't adaptation. It was reinvention. The shift didn't stop at lithography. Across China, universities and research institutes were pulled into close alignment with fabrication efforts. Together, they rebuilt a supply base from the ground up. New photoresists, domestically developed etching chemicals, custom deposition materials, and ultra-high purity gases. Components that had long been sourced from the U.S., Japan, or Europe were now produced locally, refined locally, and delivered directly into Chinese fabs. The speed of this transition stunned observers. It raised an obvious question. How did such a complex ecosystem emerge so fast? The answer lay not only in factories, but in people. Behind the scenes, a sophisticated recruitment effort was underway. Experienced engineers, process specialists, and researchers from leading global firms quietly relocated. This wasn't a slow trickle of individual hires. It was a coordinated shift. Entire teams arrived together, bringing with them decades of accumulated know-how. Some framed it as talent leakage from established players. Others saw it as a strategic realignment of global expertise. Either way, the outcome was clear. SMIC was no longer catching up. It was consolidating the knowledge needed to move ahead. At the same time, rumors circulated about a parallel initiative operating beyond SMIC's public roadmap. Referred to internally as Project Phoenix, it was never officially acknowledged, yet widely discussed. Insiders linked it to advanced optimization methods, specialized chip architectures, and research tied to extreme operating environments. There were hints of collaboration with aerospace and defense sectors, suggesting designs meant to survive radiation stress, and hostile conditions. In parallel, China appeared to have quietly completed something few thought achievable, a fully self-reliant semiconductor supply chain. From rare earth mining to wafer crystal growth, from chemical synthesis to ultra-pure gas refinement, every critical link had been rebuilt domestically. In an industry where one missing input can halt production entirely, China had engineered redundancy at every level. Deep within patent filings, another radical idea surfaced. Adaptive fabrication technology. Instead of locking production lines into rigid nodes like 5 or 3 nanometers, manufacturing systems could dynamically adjust based on the specific chip being produced. High-performance processors, energy-efficient sensors, 
and AI accelerators could all be fabricated on the same equipment without costly retooling. This blurred the line between design and manufacturing. SMIC pushed design process integration to an extreme, using AI systems that fed real-time production data directly into chip design tools. Every run improved the next. Every chip taught the system how to build a better one. The process became self-improving. Then came the leaks. Unofficial benchmarks hinted that SMIC's 2 nanometer class output might not just be competitive with the world's best, but superior in key areas. Lower power consumption. Comparable or better performance. Unexpectedly strong yields. If even part of this is accurate, it marks more than a technological breakthrough. It signals a turning point. One where the balance of power in semiconductors begins to shift, not through imitation but through an entirely new way of building the future. What began as a subtle shift has now revealed itself as a profound disruption, forcing an uneasy realization to the surface. The assumption that Western technological dominance was unshakable is no longer certain. For years, control over specialized tools created an illusion of permanence, but that confidence may have rested on far weaker ground than anyone expected. SMIC did not simply overcome barriers placed in its path it may have unsettled the very framework that defined global leadership in chip manufacturing. What's unfolding is no longer just a semiconductor story. It is a narrative about independence, about a country excluded from elite technological circles, choosing to build its own ecosystem rather than seek admission. It reflects a moment where long-standing rules lose their authority, where accepted beliefs unravel, and where a competitor once restrained by distance begins operating according to an entirely different strategic logic. If SMIC can achieve this level of sophistication without the support of ASML, LAM Research, or Tokyo Electron, the deeper question is what happens if it moves beyond them entirely? What happens if progress accelerates faster, costs fall lower, and scale expands beyond every forecast? For decades, the United States shaped the direction of innovation by regulating access to advanced manufacturing capabilities, effectively deciding who could participate in the future. That influence is now weakening. SMIC has not merely produced a new chip, it has made a statement of self-reliance. If that message holds true, the balance of power within the semiconductor industry has fundamentally shifted. The familiar gap that once defined leaders and followers has dissolved. China hasn't simply narrowed the distance, it may have diverted onto a separate and more aggressive technological trajectory. This is not about catching up anymore, it is about redefining the path forward. A silent transformation is spreading across the semiconductor landscape, one driven not by imitation, but by reinvention. Companies long viewed as untouchable, Applied Materials, LAM Research, ASML, are now confronting a future where their dominance is no longer assured. Inside these firms, engineers and strategists are racing to decode China's progress, analyzing not only the results but the pace, scalability, and long-term implications for the entire industry. The effects extend well beyond fabrication plants. Chip architects, consumer electronics manufacturers, cloud infrastructure providers, and system builders are being forced to reassess assumptions that once felt immovable. If Chinese foundries can deliver similar or superior performance with significantly lower capital requirements, the economic foundations supporting the industry for decades begin to crack. Choices that once appeared low risk are now uncertain and leadership teams are questioning what unseen innovations may still lie ahead and how they could redraw competitive boundaries. From a technical standpoint, the advance is extraordinary. SMIC's 2 nanometer process is not a minor step forward, but a complete reimagining of semiconductor fabrication. By combining conventional lithography with electron beam techniques and atomic scale deposition, they are venturing into manufacturing territory that, until now, largely existed in theory. This method depends on advanced materials engineered to self-assemble at the molecular level, enabling structures smaller than the limits imposed by light itself. The result is a level of precision at the atomic scale that surpasses anything previously achieved in high-volume production. The innovation goes beyond materials alone. SMIC's facilities are said to operate using proprietary AI-powered supercomputing systems that constantly analyze and adjust millions of parameters in real time, fine-tuning exposure, patterning, and deposition to maintain near-perfect consistency. Even the long-standing quantum problem has been reframed. As transistors shrink, quantum tunneling has traditionally threatened reliability, 
but SMIC's confinement-based engineering embraces these effects rather than resisting them, yielding chips that are smaller, faster, and more energy efficient. The timing amplifies the impact. Industry sources suggest that mass production of 2 nanometer chips could begin as early as late 2025, potentially ahead of TSMC, while development of adaptive 1.4 and 4 nanometer processes is already targeting 2026. This is not incremental progress, it is a reset of the industry's timeline. The implications are enormous. Organizations that once had limited supplier options may soon gain new leverage. Cloud service providers can revisit performance to cost strategies. Automotive companies building autonomous platforms may access advanced silicon sooner and at lower cost. And defense and aerospace sectors could establish alternative supply chains less vulnerable to global disruptions. Early indications also suggest these manufacturing methods could reduce energy consumption by up to 40%, offering a critical advantage as sustainability becomes a defining priority. What we are witnessing is a structural shift. The belief that technological leadership belongs to a small, entrenched group is eroding. The competitive landscape is changing, and every sector, from consumer devices to national security, is already feeling the strain. This moment does not mark a conclusion, but the start of something new. SMIC's progress signals a future where speed, adaptability, and long-term vision define success, and where established leaders must reinvent themselves to remain relevant. For anyone connected to technology, investors, engineers, policymakers, or consumers, the signal is unmistakable. The ground beneath the industry is moving, and the systems we depend on are evolving faster than most anticipate. The real issue is no longer whether transformation is coming, but whether we are prepared to keep pace. This is not speculation or exaggeration. The semiconductor industry is already undergoing fundamental change. In an era where disruption is constant, Awareness and adaptability are no longer optional. The future is not on the horizon, it has already arrived.